Good evening, everybody. Welcome to my channel. For those of you returning, thank you so, so much. I so appreciate your support and uh, I'm really happy to see you again. And for the new ones, well, my name is Catherine. Nice meeting you tonight for the first time. I'm doing a confessions video. So basically it's about, you know, what it is they would like to tell you that they either can but wish not to or are shy to open up about, or things that they prefer to keep totally hidden from you, but that we're gonna try and get to find out anyway, for you. <laughs> so um, I'm using a few decks. I just wanna warn you, quote unquote, that I've tempered the Kipper's deck. I removed a few cards that weren't relevant to the theme um, and it's the only deck that I've tempered actually, so, but I needed to let you know, um, out of integrity towards you. So we're doing the, uh, Order of the Zodiac, Aries through Pisces. I'm sure you're familiar <laughs> with that. Usually I do pop outs, but tonight we'll just pull. Aries, you get mature men. I'm gonna draw a another card right away and then I'm gonna start telling you a little bit what I think. Engagement. <laughs> okay. This person um, wishes to have not just a long committed relationship with you, but they want uh, an official marriage. They would like to have um, a family with you. Uh, they see it as very, very significant vows that they wish to um, honor uh, for their lifetime, for the rest of their life um, and yours. So it feels like a soul contract um, because of the depth uh, of that wish and of that desire, I should say. It's more of a desire than a, just a wish or a whim. It comes from a place of deep maturity, right? Um, something that would have been thought out really thoroughly, uh, something that they feel really, really deep in their heart, in their soul. It is not um, anything out of convenience. It is not uh, for representation. It is not for all the wrong reasons, right? They see the, um, the vows and they see the engagement as sacred. They see it as something that um, is unbreakable through lifetimes. So they probably feel within themselves, um, being very mature, that they have experienced other lifetimes with you and and they feel that maturity all the way through um, out of those particular uh, lifetimes whether they recollect them or not it's not really relevant uh, some people pretend to recollect their past lives but the importance here is to have the belief that this is a soul that you're tied to at a an incredible, at a frequency level, obviously, energetic level, but in a way that is um, fusional. <laughs> Although, um, you know, sometimes fusional can have a negative connotation um, when you're in a relationship as if, you know, you, there's no space in, in terms of being a little bit independent and your own person and stuff like that so take it with a grain of salt about being fusional right it's mostly like the souls um, and and the particular uh, exchange of energy that is 
particularly um, <laughs> is the quality of that that matters. It's, it's what's recognizable to their soul um, when they see you and when they interact with you. They know, they, they feel the movement of that. I'm going to get a tarot card uh, to describe a little bit more of this mature man. Just one card. And then we'll move into the confessions really around the engagement, besides, uh, besides what I've already said, the Seven of Cups in, in the reverse, that's amazing. So, this person, it, it's interesting. I'm not gonna read this card as the typical options. These are all the past lives that I was describing, I feel. And uh, the fact that the card is in reverse is, is indicating that in this particular lifetime, um, there's something playing out that is quite significant, uh, most likely more difficult uh, than usual. There could have been, um, it could have been quite a struggle to get to you, to finally meet you, to finally interact with you, to finally get to know you and um, reconnect after all this time, right? So they want to make sure um, that they nab you up. Uh, they want to make sure that you know how special you are because you're one in a, more than in a million here. Um, and for them, um, they wish to consecrate that through engagement, through a, a commitment, but an officialized one. So. A lot of people, uh, the way things are now, you know, you you marry and um, you share your household and you create a family. Those are typically the three main things that indicate to the rest of the world um, just how um, tight <laughs> you are, the both of you together. There is also the possibility, and I need to state that because we are in 2023, so there are other forms of engagement and of deep vows that are not those typical three uh, sets that I described. Some people live um, paired together without the official marriage but with the same kind of depth of commitment uh, than married people do, and maybe sometimes even more, right? You can't really judge that from the outside. So, because we are in 2023, I invite you to open your mind, um, and hopefully there's many of you like that here, where you know that there are different forms of engagement that you can commit, um, through other forms of rituals that you can create yourself and that have the same, if not more, uh, significance to you, right? So, I'm not necessarily saying that it should be like an open relationship and, you know, but we are looking at, it could be same-sex um, relationships, it could be um, it could be open relationships. I mean, there are so many different forms of love <laughs> and relationships now compared to before, or at least it's more visible. <laughs> but I think it's important to, to add that, to not just to state here that an engagement is only um, a particular way or has to be done in a particular way or conventional way <laughs> rather so let's see what else they would like to tell you 
You know, with because we're looking at an engagement, I'm wondering how come they wouldn't have told you already, right? Um, what would be the hang up? So I think that's why I picked up that it could have been a, almost a hassle to even or appear to be a hassle to get to you or to finally um, I'm saying that also because we have the mature man so maybe there's been quite a lot of time for this person what hap what feels like a lot of time um, before they got to know you maybe they're a bit older and so for them in their life uh, they're just really, really grateful that they've uh, finally have found uh, their soulmate. And maybe that's why they're refraining from um, telling you how committed they, they wish to be towards you. Maybe there's an age gap, maybe not, but maybe they perceive engagement uh, as because it's late in life for them or as something maybe it's less easy for them to express well that it's something that they want um, out of life in general and mostly with you and maybe it's predictive and you haven't met them uh, and they haven't met you <laughs> Hence why you wouldn't know, but then that's going to be true for every sign um, in terms of looking ahead, right, for a future lover. So never mind that really. Um, and I even want to open uh, this reading, although we're setting this up as a love relationship, your situation is not about love, 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 uh, romantic love, but rather about, let's say, a particular partner in your life, a companion, uh, a friend. Um, maybe there's a possibility that you have a form of engagement with them that is uh, just as meaningful, but that is on different terms than a love relationship, obviously. So that's another possibility. But the core of the message would remain the same uh, about feeling very, very kin to you, right? Feeling the kin, uh, kindred, kindred spirits, right? Feel, feeling that very strongly with you. Um, and again, consecrating that into something very um, significant, right? Or... How do you say really? It's more than just significant. It's a, almost a, a need. So I know it sounds a little like clingy, but it's more of a... the feeling of completeness, right? So knowing that uh, that person and you share this uh, kindred, uh, I don't know how to say that, it's not... Um, sorry, I'm having a hard time expressing what I want to say because I'm trying to make you understand that it's more significant than just... Uh, there's another word that I'm looking for and I'm at a loss for it. So let me just see if I can come up with it. If not, I'll just move on because I've already <laughs> spent a lot of time on this. I think it comes from the fact that I was telling you um, that you guys know each other from past lives, right? And that what's significant about closely uh, consecrating the, the engagement is, and why it feels like a need, is that 
is that time I was describing that it feels like either there's no more time uh, or there wouldn't be any more time to do otherwise and that maybe if it's not done in this lifetime then almost like will it ever be done in another lifetime and it almost feels like the person doesn't want to lose that chance so it's almost like um, <laughs> It feels like desperation, but it's not. It's not. It's a profound, uh, unconditional love-based um, and deep love-based um, connection that actually ties them to you and makes them want that with you. So the most important thing is here is to open the range of possibilities of having that relationship at that level of commitment um, and to take advantage of this lifetime uh, to actually make something out of it and not waste the opportunity to then wait for another lifetime to do so. Okay, finally I got the thought right, like the, I was able to tell you, articulate it better. Not easy. <laughs> and it also comes from my language barrier, so thank you for your patience on that. I appreciate it. So actually, you know what, I'm not going to draw anymore because I, I, I've clearly explained the message and I'm satisfied with what I've said. I'm going to draw a, a card to see uh, what else is in their heart when it comes to this uh, particular, in this case, this engagement, but in, when it comes to you. <laughs> the card came out, so that's beautiful. I wasn't really waiting for a pop-out, but prosperity begins. So especially in, in one of those types of relationships where it's more of a partnership, like an association or like a friendship um, or work colleagues, whatever. Um, but even in a love relationship, right? It applies, but either way, there's prosperity, there's definitely uh, expansion on the horizon here. So maybe they have a particular dream almost like um, affiliate dream. <laughs> like it's, I have a word in French that I'm, I'm not sure how to translate. That's why I've used affiliate because I think it's close enough. But it's almost like, yes, they want the love, right? It's the most important thing. Really, they, they want to be in touch with you uh, at a, on a heart to heart basis. Uh, like with the, with that as the core of the connection. But I think that they, they also see the possibility of, of creating something with you in this world, right? And I don't wanna just bring up like prosperity as only money. I think it's about building, creating, um, in, and that's much more quote unquote solid in a way, in the sense that it, it also consolidates the engagement. So it's part of what they have in mind with you. And it's part of the many things that they see they could have, um, they could develop with you. And maybe even out of many different things that might be around them in their life, right? But through different people, maybe they have a particular connection with you where it's a all one-stop shop, right? Where contrary to other people, they feel that there's a, a more of a plurality of possibilities with you. And I'm not saying that they have options and that they're entertaining options and that, not like that. I'm just saying that in their life in general, the other people that, you know, their friends and family and colleagues and acquaintances, because um, I'm not looking at necessarily uh, people that are cheating here. Never, obviously not. That's not the point of the reading.
So to say that, I don't know if you've ever experienced that, um, um, like you have a really uh, good business partner and some people like to compartmentalize, oh, I can never say that word, to like keep things separate. But uh, it's not always like, um, Practical. <laughs> I don't know if practical, no, practical is not really the right word to describe this. It's fine because we all have different people for different things and we all share different things with different people in our lives. But it seems that with you, there's, there's more of, you touch more things, many more things for them. Um, I don't want to go into details of like an example. I, I just hope that that's enough for you to imagine what it could look like for you. And I'm going to leave the message here. Um, I gave you a very long one area. So I'm going to switch to Taurus now. Okay. Taurus, let's do you. We're looking at confessions, right? So the things that they wish to tell you um, that they haven't, uh, either purposely or not, so that <laughs> we don't know. Um, an official person. So someone with a particular status or um, a particular relationship to you in terms of um, structure, like let's say maybe in work or even in society in general, like um, hmm. I'm thinking about castes in India, but we obviously don't have that here, so but it does exist, so I it came out <laughs> But maybe there are other places, quote unquote, where you interact, uh, whether it's through a community or a health center or where they are, uh, there are maybe some forms of hierarchy and then your place, you'd have a particular relationship uh, as this one being official uh, versus you maybe not being so official. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Let's get a, another card here. So you get playfulness. I'm not reading the whole card. Uh, I'm just using the keyword on top. So it's surprising that you get playfulness with official person because um, it's surprising and yet it's totally in line with the confession because Usually official people will have to remain quite sober, um, you know, appear dignified and um, solemn a little bit, uh, especially if the person is in a, works in an organization where there's like uniforms and ranks and all of that. So that's even more uh, on point. But um, playfulness is exactly what they wish to, to, to let you know that besides this look of appearing maybe a little bit distant, uh, in fact, inside they could be really like, I don't know, a little mischievous, uh, <laughs> either adolescent child or have a personality that is extremely um, playful, but candid and uh, that loves to laugh. I think that also uh, I am getting the trickster energy for sure. Of course, this this person would, could play pr uh, play pranks on you uh, or pull pranks on you. I don't know how to say that. Mm. But mostly they want to engage with you through play. 
So it could be role play if we're looking at what happens in the bedroom. It could be even just a, a break for them from everything that is so um, official for them, you know, in their work, because I sense that to be mostly in their work environment. Um, but even maybe if, if they're in the limelight a little bit, you know, then even when they're not at work, uh, they have to uphold this particular persona, quote-unquote, and, and that implies that they won't always be giddy and uh, silly, for, you know, in, especially out in public, basically. So I'm sensing the playfulness would play out <laughs> even more like in the private setting. Um, so you don't get to see that um, unless, of course, you already know the person. But even in the case that you don't know the person, this is a confession. So maybe they, they have, maybe there's something in what I've already said that you know is exactly true about they haven't told you. Um, I'm gonna get a tarot card. I just want one to describe further the confession. So the Eight of Cups in the reverse. So they don't like to play games. That's another way of seeing this. They really don't like to play games. They don't want you to play games of, oh, I don't like what you're saying. I'm gonna walk out and then, you know, we're gonna make up and then I'm gonna walk out again when we're not in good terms and then I'm gonna come back. So this official person um, actually does not enjoy the back and forth. Um, and so as much as they love to engage playfully with you, uh, we also see now that they don't want to be toyed with, uh, they don't want to be lied to, they don't want to be um, They also don't want to feel because this is emotional manipulation. If you if you come and go like that, um, or if you always threaten to leave at the first little thing that doesn't go well, and you're always well, I'm gonna leave you. You know, like it's that's like it's a game. It's a manipulative game of control. So it's important not to or at least to respect the fact that this person uh, does not want to engage in this way. But they clearly haven't told you straight up. They haven't told you that they don't like that actually. Um, because we're looking at confessions, of course. <laughs> so let's look at uh, what's in their heart and see um, What else could be added? Destiny. That's cool. So this person doesn't want to be toyed with because they sense um, that you play a major role in their life. The relationship is significant to them. It matters. Uh, they hold it uh, dear. Um, it's not something that they want to play with. They want to be playful in the relationship. They want, they want to be able to have fun. They want to be able to relax. They want to be able to be themselves and unwind and all of that. So playfulness will get them there, um, change their mood, uh, give them a break from like the facade they have to uphold uh, out in the world. Uh, you know, many hours a day and then suddenly they can let go when they're with you. But in return, they, they really don't want you to play the, the game of, well, something happens and, well, if you do this or if you don't do that, I'm going to go. And 
Although destiny reminds me, obviously, it's it's the equivalent of the Wheel of Fortune, of course, in this deck. So there will always be the ups and downs in the relationships. So it's important to know that the games cannot be played in a relationship that was destined to start with. Uh, it could affect greatly. It could affect it greatly or just, you know, uh, just annihilate it. Like, annihilate the relationship because for instance the typical scenario would be one person leaves one time too many and then the person you in this case doesn't want to uh, take them back after all of that <laughs> and then it ends you know what I mean that would be uh, disappointing and it would be a shame. It would be a waste. Let's do Gemini. This video is getting long. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do three signs. I'm going to cut it here afterward. After you, Gemini, I'm going to close it out and I'm gonna keep going but by pairs of well pairs not pairs but three by three <laughs> okay Gemini for you confessions on this on the person the uh, on the person's part occupation I I kept this card in the deck uh, I was telling you at the beginning, if in case you didn't hear it in the intro, that I did temper the Kipper deck because there were a few cards that are not relevant to the theme. So, but as I was picking them out, right, I saw occupation. I kept it because I see it also as preoccupation. So I'm gonna see what else comes up, and it might take that turn. <laughs> You know, it might take that shade uh, of being preoccupied. I don't know yet. Let's see what Doreen says. True love. True love. Wow. I'm going to get a, the tarot card right away so I can really get my bearings on this one, Gemini. Let's see. King of Pentacles in the reverse. You know, that's the preoccupation. The fact that the king is in the reverse. Excuse for the excuse the, the glare. I apologize for that. So the fact that the king is in the reverse uh, shows me that yes, there is some preoccupation regarding your love, uh, the quality of your love. So maybe this person is questioning if the love is true or not, okay? And I believe that the king uh, is doubting greatly. And they doubt it through, uh, there's like, I guess it's twofold. Because they are the king of pentacles, they look at finances very closely and they attach a lot of importance at someone's healthy financial situation. And for some reason, I get the feeling that maybe your situation is not as healthy as it could be. And if it, if it is, my, I mean, I apologize, I, not that I apologize, but I mean, in the context of this reading, Please uh, indulge me here. I'm just going to finish my trail of thought. But I mean, if it's not you, it could be that it's just not your reading. But it could also be that there's only a portion of what I'm about to say that, that applies. So let me get back to that. So what's twofold is that they're looking at basically your finances and, and the love that you have for them. And that particular equation matters to them. Um, for some reason, for this particular king, they don't um, foresee a long uh, relationship 
uh, or long committed relationship uh, as being solid uh, if it doesn't have a strong financial foundation. So what's twofold about the preoccupation is, well, they're wondering, are you actually able to uh, sustain yourself and how well are you doing really? And how much can you participate within the relationship? And how much uh, of your feelings uh, are true blue, right? So it weighs on their mind. And you know, the thing about the financials here, how much they matter to this king, it also can be seen about the occupation. Do you have a good job? Do you have a, do you have, are you someone that has a fair um, standing, you know, like something where you're, you're grounded and through your work, through your occupation, through what you do and how you earn your money. And I would go as far as how you perceive maybe even within that particular environment. What's your reputation like, you know? professional reputation. So let's see what else is in their hearts um, about this, this card. Emotional withdrawal. So yes, because they're preoccupied and they're analyzing all of this, um, they've taken a step back from you. It could also be that what they've found out regarding your finances has made them step back. Maybe they're really not pleased with what they see. And not to be judgmental, I don't think that he necessarily wants to be judgmental in this way. It's just that these are his core values and he's in integrity with himself uh, when he honors the fact that it matters to him within the context of your relationship so um, he feels uh, justified um, to take a step back if he's realized that basically you might not be uh, financially stable Gemini <laughs> so what I'll do here, guys, I know I said it's in all signs and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep uh, pulling and doing the readings, but just because the length of the video, uh, I'm already at almost 40 minutes, I'm going to cut it here so it's easier for the upload and I'll just uh, do three signs at a time uh, instead, okay? So thank you so, so much for being here. Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, um, please like your like the video. Sorry, <laughs> like the video on your way out, and subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't already. Thank you. Good night.